What you think you know may not be so. How can that be? We know a lot. We go to school, read, watch TV, learn from parents, friends. Why would what we know not be so? Because our instincts are often wrong. It took me too long to learn that. When I was a consumer reporter, I thought government regulation was the solution to consumers being ripped off. Wrong. Regulation hurt consumers more. I thought America was running out of fuel, that overpopulation was a big problem, that it's crucial that things be made in America. Wrong again. All wrong. Let's start with the made in America frenzy. I am so upset. Majority Leader Harry Reid and others are upset that the U.S. Olympic Committee bought uniforms made in China. I think they should take all the uniforms, put them in a big pile and burn them and start all over again. We have people in the textile industry who are desperate for jobs. Yes, people are desperate for jobs. Isn't it outrageous when Americans need jobs? We buy uniforms made overseas? Well, no, actually, it's stupid to worry about that. It took me too long to understand the concept, so let me bring in some professional help. Art Cardin's an economist from Samford University. So, Art, why not worry about sending work to other countries? Because the fundamental thing about trade is it makes everybody better off. Trade benefits both of the countries that are able to engage in trade. It benefits both of the parties that are able to engage in trade. But those uniforms could have been made by American workers. They're but not at a cost that makes sense. The problem in the United States is we're so much better at so many different things that quite honestly making garments is no longer our what, what economists call comparative advantage. I wouldn't necessarily call that a problem. I would call it an advantage because those jobs being a seamstress or working on a loom are factory jobs that are not so pleasant. And now, even though those clothes aren't made in America, they're designed, they're marketed, they're sold here, they're shipped in trucks made in America, they're built on machines made by Americans. And although Chinese workers made those garments, the Chinese Olympic team will fly to London on American-made planes mm -hmm. and American-designed right. planes. Right. And they're going to be wearing U.S.-designed footwear. Right. And this makes us all richer. Yeah, it absolutely does. People don't so, get that. Right, people don't. And one could argue that the, that the American uniforms were not manufactured in China, rather they were grown in a soybean field in Iowa. Something that we export to China is soybeans because we're incredibly productive in the soybean market. We get more uniforms at lower prices. The Chinese get more soybeans at lower prices. They get higher wages. We get lower prices. Everybody wins. And if we insisted that everything be made in America, all the Olympic clothing, right. we'd be poor. Absolutely. A couple other myths. Sure. Overpopulation. I was told that's why Asia's poor. That's why Africa's poor. It's a big right. problem. Yeah, the problem is not that there are too many people the problem is that, for the most part, they don't have free markets. They have bad governments, kleptocracies right. that take their resources. Right. I think one way that opened, one thing that opened my brain about it was to look at some of the population data. I heard that Nigeria is poor because of overpopulation. Right. Pakistan's poor because of over overpopulation. And look, Nigeria, Pakistan, they have 174 people per square mile, 225 right. people per square mile. But that's half what the right. Netherlands has, yes. and Holland is rich. Mm -hmm. It's one-tenth what Hong Kong and Singapore right. have, and they're really rich. Yeah, people's ultimate resource is the mind. And indeed, one thing that's interesting... More people is more brains absolutely. to invent more people, stuff. More people, more brains. More people closer together in urban areas means more conversations. Overpopulation is not a problem. Absolutely not. And related to that, I'm told we're running out of fuel. I've been told that for years. Jimmy Carter mm -hmm. in 1977 said, we're now running out of gas and oil. Would happen in the next decade. That's more than 30 years ago. Right. But if we are, in fact, running out of oil, that implies that prices should be rising over the very, very long run. But for the most part, um, for, for the most part, for decades, oil has been getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And even as it does start to get more expensive, people start to search for substitutes. They look for more oil. They look for things like natural gas. People, these brains, keep inventing new ways right. to suck more oil out yes. of the same wells, mm -hmm. find more oil, mm -hmm. dig deeper. Right. We have stores of much more oil and gas now than we did yep. when President Carter was saying we're running out. Mm -hmm years ago. All right, we've touched on some of these national myths. Let's go on to myths more about your personal choices. There's a popular blog called All Teacher Confidential. 
It gives contrarian personal advice like you should unschool your kids. It's written by internet entrepreneur James Altucher. He made millions by starting the website stockpicker.com and selling that in a couple of the companies. What do you mean unschool your kids? So what does that mean? It means our kids are being taught to go to the bathroom, walk, move, eat, pay attention, all by a bell in a school. And what do they actually remember from school? I'll educate my kids better than the government at this point. So my kids are not learning Most anything they're going to remember. Most people don't want to. Most people don't want to homeschool their kids or form their own school. We trust the experts. The experts are getting funding based on the lowest common denominator. So they teach their kids to do well on fill in the circle tests and that's it. There's no other learning in school. You're chained to a desk listening to the most boring teachers of all and we've all been there. How, what did you learn in school? What do you remember? When, when was Charlemagne born? I can't Ask anyone who can tell me when Charlemagne was born. And that's an, I know that's a fact I learned in school. So pull them out of school and just get together with the neighbors and invent something? Well, no. You give them opportunities to learn. So have books available, have drawing materials available, have them play sports. No one wants to sit and listen to someone lecture for six hours. But I'm willing to pay my kids a, a page per book to, to read books. I'm willing to pay my kids to write reviews of books. I'll set up my social play dates with my kids with other kids who are either being homeschooled or unschooled. Unschooling. All right. We're told you got to go to college, especially to get a job. Sure, which is a, a total myth. We know that this is a scam per perpetuated not only by the banks but with the government to get stu students. And the colleges. Student and the colleges, yeah. Tuitions have gone up 1,000% at the same time that inflation has gone up 300%. So why have tuitions gone up so much? Is it really that valuable to learn uh, uh, to get a college degree? I'm told it is. Imagine if you had a five-year head start and no student loan debt. I'm sure, And you had the same ambition and aggressiveness as someone who went to school. I'm sure you would do better. 20 years later. Another one, we're told everybody should vote. You need to vote. Hey, you know, we all live in New York State, so what, what good is our vote we here? Do. You may not, but uh, it, most of you live in a state where this is true. Go ahead. Yeah, there's, there's maybe four or five battleground states where your votes have some sway on not only the governor level, but the president level and so on. Well, if you live in Colorado, Florida, Ohio, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, one of these Ohio. swing states, <laughs> you know, the, your vote, it could be a one vote election. So think about that. Finally, you both say, don't be so scared. What do you mean? Well, look at the news today. The news, every day, the news is gr worries about Europe, worries about Greece. The reality is things are going pretty well in America. The economy is actually growing. You would think we're in a horrible recession based on the headlines, but it's not. But we have this biological need to be scared of things. The, the, the people that we evolved from ran away from the running elephants. They didn't get trampled by the elephants. So we're always looking out for the predators. But the reality is it's okay for things to be good once in a while, but all the headlines w would suggest things are bad. Hey, I'm a consumer reporter. I've done them too. Swine flu, avian flu, global yeah. warming, ha mad cow disease. What happened with, with avian flu? Where was that? Where are the birds? It might have killed us. You might have gotten brain cancer from your cell maybe, phone. Maybe we're in hell right now. And, and you say, Art, it could happen is one of the most dangerous phrases in the English language. Yes, it is, because people tend to systematically overestimate very, 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 very small risks. For most of the things that people freak out about, like, for example, threat of terrorism, the idea that your child might be abducted playing in the front yard or things like that, if that's, if you're genuinely that frightened about that. That is what people worry about. Yeah, it is what people, it is what people worry about. But if you're genuinely worried about that, you'd never get in a car again. Because the risk of driving, for example, is so, so, so much more greater, or excuse me, so much greater than the risk of dying in a terrorist attack or something like that. Or even the risk of being killed by a deer because right. you drive into a deer. Yeah, or dying of a peanut allergy or something like that. Um, but terrorism is a bigger deal. It killed 3,000 people here in New absolutely. York. Absolutely. But then cost us another $10 trillion in wars. It made the rest of the world hate us, and it increased the odds in some cases of terrorism or other unbalance happening in the Middle East. On that note, food for thought. You can take it or leave it, but thank you, Art and thank James. You. What? We think we know often is not so.